Hey what's going on YouTube, welcome to my video review of the M98B Sniper Rifle. In the first third of the video I'm going to be using the 40x scope with the rangefinder and I'm going to be discussing tactics for sniping at extreme ranges. Then I'm going to talk about the M98B statistics and compare it with the SRR61 aka the intervention. I've already done a video on the intervention so if you haven't seen it yet click on the picture in picture and the video will open up in a new window. If you want to snipe at extreme ranges and go for these really long range headshots make sure your team won't miss a gun on the front line. When you're positioning yourself to take advantage of the 40 time scope, you're not necessarily in the best position to contribute to objective play. Even if you got really good at sniping at extreme ranges, like say one kill per minute, I think that's a realistic number to say someone's really good at extreme range sniping, or even if you were Mark Wahlberg from the movie Shooter, you're not helping your team as much as being close to the objective and watching the lines of sight over the end comms or the flags because extreme range sniping doesn't necessarily give you the best line of sight to watch over those flags or end comms. If you notice the score in these games where I'm sniping at extreme ranges, the enemy team has no chance whatsoever to come back, so I decided to have some fun and test the limits of the M98B. If you remember some of my previous sniping videos, I normally don't recommend zeroing your scope, but I do for these shots because I am aiming at only one specific range. On the 40 time scope, the first line down from the center of the crosshair is 200 meters above your zero. So if you zero your scope at 500 meters and the target is at 700 meters, put your target on the first line from the crosshair center. Hainan Resort is one of the maps I found to be better for extreme range sniping, but Siege of Shanghai could be okay except you just have really bad visibility once the skyscraper falls and that always happens within the first 5 minutes. People know that games crash whenever the skyscraper falls but people still insist upon taking out the skyscraper. Paracel Storm is certainly large enough for extreme range sniping but you have poor visibility even before the storm hits. Goldmud Railway, all the objectives, I mean Goldmud is definitely large enough but all the objectives are in between the buildings and there's just not a whole lot of lines of sight that favor snipers unless you're thinking of counter sniping the other snipers. I don't know about Goldmud, I'll have to give it a try. but. Dawnbreaker, I think, of course, it has the same issues as Goldmud. It's certainly large enough, but line of sight could be a problem. But once China Rising comes out, a lot of better maps will be available for extreme range sniping. And we are getting Caspian Border and, what is it, Operation Firestorm back in the second Assault DLC whenever that launches for PC. So that'll definitely help those going for extreme range headshots. My best headshot in Battlefield 3 was 770 meters with the L96 and I only got that because I was going for the L96 350 meters headshot challenge to get that L96 camo and then I wound up never ever using the L96 again because the L96 was so bad in Battlefield 3 but did I just go on a really long tangent rant? Anyways guys never ever let me do that again. Please interrupt me whenever I do that again. Oh wait you're watching a video you're not actually in front of me and listening to my conversations. But anyways, let's crunch the numbers and look at the weapon statistics of the M98B. With 650 meters per second, it has the best bullet velocity in the sniper rifle class. It's tied for the best damage model with it's doing its minimum damage at a staggering 150 meters. It's tied for the highest magazine size with 10 rounds and one more in the chamber. And it has an average bullet drop acceleration value with 9.81 meters per second squared or 1G. And it's tied for the slowest rate of fire at 40 rounds per minute. Naturally, these stats make the M98B one of the best long range sniper rifles. It directly competes with the intervention for the best long range accuracy. The advantages it has over the intervention is that it has a 30 meters per second faster bullet velocity and 3 more bullets in each magazine, but the disadvantage over the intervention is that it has slightly more bullet drop. The intervention is tied for the least amount of bullet drop in the sniper rifle class. From my experience, both rifles are lethal at long ranges. But 200 meters and above is where the intervention really starts pulling away from the M98B. If you remember some shots I took earlier in those extreme range headshots, the bullet flight path was extremely parabolic because I aimed so much above the target. 
It's difficult to see where the bullet lands and make subsequent adjustments because you're dealing with a thick vapor trail. But the less bullet drop on the intervention means a flatter bullet trajectory and it's easier to see where each bullet lands and make adjustments from there. For engagements longer than 200 meters, the intervention is definitely my pick. But under 200 meters, the M98B is a lot more deadly. You have three more bullets in each magazine, so you can keep putting rounds downrange instead of ducking back to reload. A high bullet velocity is personally my most valued sniper rifle characteristic. I shoot at a lot of moving targets, so a fast bullet velocity means I have to lead each target less. I find it easier to adjust for a bullet drop than anticipating target movement, so the low bullet drop on the intervention doesn't help me so much at sub 200 meter targets. You can definitely play the objective with the M98B, but I find it's not as good as rifles with a faster rate of fire like the Scout Elite or the M40. You don't have as good of a chance to land follow-up shots in panic situations, but in a way, a high damage offsets a slow rate of fire. Because it takes such a long range before the M98B starts doing its minimum damage, you have a good chance for one-shot body shot kills. With 75 damage at 80 meters, you can still kill someone with one body shot if they took just one assault rifle bullet. There's a lot of activity around the objective, so you're going to find a lot of half health targets. In summary, the M98 Bravo is best used at ranges over 100 meters due to its high damage, but I don't think you have as much flexibility to play the objective as the M40 because you're dealing with such a slow rate of fire with the M98B. For engagements over 200 meters, it's the second best sniper rifle, the second best extreme range sniper rifle, losing out only to the SRR61. Thank you very much for watching this video review. Leave a like rating if you learned something. Be sure to subscribe to my channel for more Battlefield 4 and all things PC gaming. My name is David, and I'll see you next video.